Well, good afternoon. This is a Tuesday evening for me. Uh, it's good to be with you again. You'll be listening to this uh, tomorrow night, which is Wednesday night. And uh, what an honor and a privilege it is for me to be able uh, to do this again, although I would like to see your faces. Again, thank you for the pictures that are in the pews. Uh, certainly remind me of, of you and always thankful to be reminded of you people that I love and and care for so much. Years ago, I heard a true story. I was talking with a nurse uh, at one of our nursing, one of our institutions. There were people was going to have an, uh, a procedure done. And she came in right after lunch. And at the end of the day, they were making their rounds in the rooms, making sure that everything was tidied up and all of that. And they opened the door to her room, and she was still there. She'd been there since right after lunch. And uh, so they kind of played it off like she was the last one, you know, and they did the procedure on her. I don't know if the lady ever knew the difference or not. But uh, someone asked me the question, what do you uh, despise worse about going to a doctor's office? And I don't mind going to the doctor. Most of mine are kind of specialists. I mind sitting in the waiting room. Uh, don't like to, to wait. Most of the time, I don't have to. But if we go to one of the urgent cares, a lot of times you never know who is around you, uh, what they're waiting for. I knew when I went to Dr. Anderson's office, people were there to have their heart checked out or whatever. But... Uh, we don't like to wait, certainly don't like to wait in, in a waiting room because it seems like we are forgotten sometimes. As I look at the 13th Psalm, that's what we'll be looking at, 13, 1 through 6. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and look with me. We're going to look at the life of David. It seems if you read the Psalms, David spent a lot of time in God's waiting room. Uh, because of the problems that he faced. Many believe that this was another one of the Psalms that he wrote uh, while David, while Saul was, King Saul was chasing him, trying to kill him. And uh, this, is, this is what he said in verse 1. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love my heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Let's pray. Father, as we look at this passage of Scripture, as we find David in your waiting room, Lord, so many times we find ourselves in the same place. Father, help us as we look at this Scripture. Help us to look at the answers and the attitudes of David. Help us to be more patient in the waiting room. Help us to look to you for guidance and direction. Help us to ask you to be the light of our life so that you can lead us in the dark times that we face. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lehman Strauss has written many books. I have some in the library, some about prophecy, some just commentaries and things like that. But Lehman uh, Strauss passed away in 1997. He had been ministering for many years. He had taught people how to live, how to uh, wait on God and things like that, like most of us have that have preached the Word of God. But he was talking about how to react and how to live in God's waiting room through most of his messages that he, that he preached. After they had, he and his wife Elsie had been married 50 years, he actually spent some time in God's waiting room. 
Elsie had a massive stroke and she needed care 24 seven and he was there to provide it for her. While this was taking place, he wrote a book called In God's Waiting Room. He had taught others about how to wait in God's waiting room. Now he was getting to live it out himself. He was actually doing, finding himself in a place where he had taught others how to live when they found themselves in this place. David uh, was also, I would say, in God's waiting room uh, when he penned this 13th Psalm. Saul had attempted to kill David time after time. And this went on for many were from seven to 12 years. Can you imagine the stress he experienced? Seven to 12 years looking over his shoulder every day, wondering if this was going to be the day that Saul was going to kill him. We can see why David asked the Lord in this passage of Scripture four times, how long? How long? I know you've asked that question as well. Lord, how long do I have to go through this? Lord, how long? How long? We find ourselves many times in God's waiting room ourselves. What lessons do we learn while we're in God's waiting room? Lesson number one, we need to confess how you really feel to God. Pour your heart out to God. That's what he wants us to do. And I use this word respectfully. Complain to him. Complain to him. But remember who you're talking with. He knows we need to vent. And many others before us have done the same thing. And God honored them. God didn't wipe them off the face of the earth. God listened. David's psalms, uh, this psalm begins like he was living a life that was in defeat. And that's the way he felt. But most of the Psalms that we read wind up in victory, victory from God. This situation really didn't change even though he was in God's waiting room and he poured out his heart to God. But the thing about it was David's attitude changed while he was in God's waiting room. Just as God has provided grace for David, to go through these dark times we face in the waiting room, he has provided that same grace for us as well. There's four how longs in this passage of Scripture that we read today. What about the four how longs? First of all, in verse 1, Lord, how long? It, he felt as God had forgotten him. You know, this social distancing that you and I experience today, I feel alone. I've talked with people on the phone and they talk about how uh, they don't do anything, they don't get out, they don't go anywhere uh, because they're afraid to go anywhere because of the virus that we're a part of. But David had no choice but to practice social distancing because Saul was after him, seemed like day and night. You know, in some of our circumstances while we're in God's waiting room, it seems like he may have forgotten us. But we know that he hasn't. God won't forget us. Even though when we get in uh, the, the dark part of our life where we really don't understand, especially in God's waiting room, it seems like God has forgotten us because he doesn't answer our prayer or our cries quickly as we would like for him to. We sometimes feel that God has forsaken us. That's how he felt. In verse 1, he felt that God had forsaken him. He felt abandoned. He was in God's waiting room, but he felt like God uh, was nowhere around. Do you ever feel abandoned? Uh, sometimes, especially when you go to the doctor's office, do you ever wonder, are they ever going to call me back? Are they ever going to, to call me back? You know, I think about David. David was in God's waiting room on this particular instance for 7 to 12 years. Lord, are you ever going to answer me? How long? How long am I going to have to go through this before everything is okay? I don't have to worry for my life each and every day. 
it seems like he was facing defeat. That's what he said in uh, in the verse. He said, Lord, how long will my enemy triumph? He felt like he was living a defeated life. You know, sometimes we feel like we are living a defeated life as well. We do the best that we can, and it seems like things just don't turn out as the way we would love for them to turn out. But let me remind you, while you're in God's waiting room, it's impossible for God to forget you. It is. It's impossible for God to forget you. He said he'd never leave us and never forsake us. We should not let despair control our lives. When we do that, we feel and live like we have been defeated. David was in God's waiting room. He was wondering, Lord, how long am I going to have to wait? How long am I going to have to go through all these things? Can I get some relief some way, somehow or another? But we always know that with God, the enemy's not going to win in the end. He's not going to win. He may defeat us along the way, but he's not going to win because we know that when this life is over, uh, we've got a, a lot better place to look forward to. But while we're in God's waiting room, there's another lesson. We need to cry out for God to, to light the way for us because when we're in God's waiting room, a lot of time, uh, waiting room, so, sometimes it feels like we're in darkness. We have no idea what's going on. And we are in darkness because we're not God. We don't know what He has going on. In, in our life, but certainly we thank God to know that he is in the waiting room with us. He cried out for understanding. He said, how long, Lord? How long am I going to be kept in the dark? David asked him in verse 3 for the, the light of God's presence. In his dark times, he wanted the light of God's presence. Why? Because in the previous part of this chapter, he says, Lord, I feel like you've turned away from me. You've forgotten me. Lord, you have forsaken me. Let me see the light of your presence once again. Give me some direction while I'm in this waiting room. You know, sometimes it takes circumstances for us to realize that we need God in our life, such as we're going through right now. Probably the as much praying going on today as it was during the, the Gulf War. You remember how that was? People are praying. People are helping each other. I'm telling you, it's amazing to see uh, how God is working through people to help people out during these trying times. Uh, this coronavirus has really opened our eyes to our frailty. You know, we're, we're nothing or we're really nothing. I mean, this thing has really uh, uh, raised havoc on a lot of lives. I was just seeing where there was nine in one family that came down with this virus, and three of those individuals of that family have passed away. Uh, our, our bodies are real frail. We need God's help. We need God's presence every day. I like the song, I Need Thee Every Hour. We need Him every hour. We need Him every second of the day. 24-7, because we face three enemies every day. We face the world, we face the flesh, and then we face Satan each and every day of our life. We need some light to help guide us through our everyday life. We need to cry out to God that he might light our way. There's another lesson that we find. We must let everyone know our trust is in God while we're in God's waiting room. Uh, you know, I've been in the waiting room when people didn't get called back when they thought they ought to have got called back. And sometimes they'd go up to the desk and they'd make a scene. Uh, they really will. And I'm not looking at any of you, but some of you probably done that. Uh, I've try always tried to been, be patient in the doctor's office, but I'm sure some of you probably have done that. You you went in there uh, kind of upset, 
maybe because of something going on in your life, and then the doctor don't call you back when you're supposed to be there, it just adds up and you just blow up. I mean, that's just the, the way it is. But David said, let everyone know that I trust in God. Even though Saul's been after him for 7 to 12 years, even though it feels like God has forsaken me, God's forgotten me, I want everyone to know that I still trust God. I still trust Him. Verse 5 and 6, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for He has been good to me. What happened to David? Boy, he was whining and crying at the beginning of this passage of Scripture. But he says, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise. Wow, what a change. For he has been good to me. You know, when we realize how good God has been to us, no matter what we're going through, uh, a kind of a song comes into our heart, uh, a song of rejoicing, because God has been good to us. And God is good to us. And he wants to be good to you till he calls you home. And then he's going to be real good when he calls you home because you're going to be with him in this place called heaven. But what happened to David? His despair turned to rejoicing. What a difference in a man's life. All because he was in God's waiting room. Not that he had received any answers. He hadn't received any answers after Pouring out his heart to God, though, he found peace. You may not always get answers. Certainly will not get answers in your time. But you can have the peace of God knowing that you brought them to the Lord and you put your cares and your problems in His hands and they are in the best hands when they're in God's hand. David felt that God had turned His face back to him. I'm telling you, uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, when we drift away from God, it feels like God has turned His face. It hasn't. God, God hasn't turned His face at all. We've turned our face to Him. And sometimes He has to put us in the waiting room and time out to figure out what's going on in our life. You know, we like to figure out a lot of things, don't we? Rather than take it to the Lord, He said, I'll just put you in the waiting room and let you figure it out a while. And David probably did that in his life because he was a great, great king. He was a, or at this time, he wasn't a king, but he was a great man. But he, like all men, we like to try to figure out our own problems, try to solve our own problems. But David felt that God had finally turned his face back to him. And he felt good. He felt good enough that he was ready to sing again. Dave, David was a was a heart guy, boy. I'm telling you, he he was good. He played for King Saul, and 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 he loved music. And when you're not feeling good, you just don't want to sing. But what a rejoicing must have taken place in his life because he was now able to sing again. He now felt he could face anything because he had put his trust in the Lord, knowing God was going to take care of him because God had promised him no matter what he went through that he was going to help him through each and every crisis that he faced. David trusted in verse 5. He trusted in God's unfailing love. You see, he knew God had called. He knew God had anointed to, the, to this position of kingship that he was going to take over. Now he trusted God to sustain him. That's what we've got to do. We've got to trust God to sustain us. Even though our answers might not come as quickly as we want it to, we've got to put our trust in God and trust that He's going to sustain us. He's going to go through the crisis with us no matter what it is. Because a lot of times that's how we really grow, going through a difficult time in our life. And then knowing that we can trust God to see us through the difficult times, just as David did. 
David's crying in verse 6, sorrow was now replaced with a song. You ever, you ever been in that position where you were whining and crying yourself? You really didn't know what to do and all of a sudden uh, you began to rejoice again. You began to feel good again because you knew the Lord had really touched you. You knew the Lord was right by your side no matter what you were facing. You see, David refocused. Rather than looking at King Saul, he looked at King Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, you get a whole lot of different picture when you look at King Jesus because he forgot his problems. He forgot his problem. Focusing on his problems made him miserable. Listen, I don't know about you, but focusing on my problems make me miserable. But if we'll focus on him, we'll sure feel a whole lot better. That's what David did in this passage of Scripture. When he focused on God, his problem suddenly became small. Because we got a big God. We serve a big God that can take care of anything. And when he realized, again, who God was and God had called him and God was going to sustain him, boy, it didn't take long for him to refocus and change the whining and crying into a song of a rejoicing. You know, you learn a lot in the, the waiting room of doctor's office, don't you? Sometimes you learn some things you wish you hadn't learned. You hear some things you wish you had not have heard. But you know, you learn a lot in God's waiting room. You really do. In the great physician's office, you learn a lot in God's waiting room. We all have problems. Some people more than others. Some people, and you know who I'm talking about. You probably have friends and family. It seems like they have trouble, problems, problems on top of problems. We need to stop focusing on the problems and start focusing on the problem solved. We need to concentrate on Him. While we're in the waiting room, I pray that the Lord will teach us how to refocus off of our problems and focus onto the problem solver. You know, on our worst days as a Christian, we need to rejoice because we've been saved. We know someone is going with us through the problems that we face every day. We know that. You know, this life is like, the Bible tells us this life is like a cloud. You know, clouds here one minute and gone the next. It's like a blade of a gla a grass that withers here today and gone tomorrow. It's, it's like the wind. The, the wind is blowing out here today, but it may not be blowing tonight. But we get focused on our troubles and trials, and it's easy to forget about the blessings of God. We should do as David did in his despair while he was in God's waiting room. This was what he did. He vented out to the Lord respectfully. He revented out his feelings to the Lord. Tell, he told the Lord all about what was going on in his life, even the Lord, even though the Lord already knew. You know, the Lord knows what's going on in your life. You just need to talk to Him about it while you're sitting in God's waiting room. Let the Lord know that you and I need the light of His way each and every day in our life because we're living in a world of darkness. We live in a world we, of, we don't know. But the Lord knows. So we need, as I said a while ago, need to focus on Him, the problem solver, and not our problems so much. And then, I like the last two verses. David was able to sing again because uh, the Lord has a song for us once we focus on Him. Telling you, there's nothing better than focusing on the Lord in our times of troubles, in our times of need, in times of sorrow, because He knows what we're going through. He just wants us to talk to Him while we're in His waiting room. And I want you to know, when you go see the great physician, He'll give you what you need. He knows what you need. He said He'd supply our needs no matter what we face. 
That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God David served. And he was there for him each and every day. And he'll be there for you each and every day as well. And I pray that while you're in God's waiting room, you'll learn a lot of things. Not only will you learn a lot of things, you'll put them into practice when you come out of God's waiting room. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the waiting room. Lord, it's not always a good place to be. Sometimes we feel like we're there by ourselves. But Lord, we if we'd focus on you instead of our problems, we'd realize that you're right there with us all the time. So Lord, as we uh, come to the close of this message, I pray that if there's someone sitting in your waiting room right, right now, I pray that they will just pour out their heart to you. You already know what's going on in their life. Lord, you know, we have the saying, it feels better if you get it off your chest. Lord, a lot of people I'm sure would feel a whole lot better if they'd get some things off their chest with you and do it respectfully, realizing who they're talking to. And Lord, we, we thank you for your presence. Sometimes it does feel like uh, you've forsaken us. Sometimes it feels like you've forgotten us. But we know that you haven't. And when we get so focused on the things of the world, the problems of the world, that's when we feel that way. So Lord, help us to refocus in our life. Help us to focus on you. Help us to trust in you just like David did. And when we get through trusting, we'll have a new song. We'll sing a song of praise and glory because we're no longer in your waiting room. We're out doing what you called us to do. So Lord, I pray that you've spoken to hearts. Pray that this is encouraged hearts. Somebody may feel like they're in the waiting room right now. I pray that you'll just uh, get in the waiting room and really mean business with God. And God will mean business with you. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.